We saw that there are a virtually unlimited number of portfolios you can form with a given number of risky assets to choose from and they would all provide different risk and return combinations. But there is a single subset called the efficient frontier from which you would actually want to pick your portfolio because portfolios that do not fall on the efficient frontier have too much risk or too little return or both. So now we're going to have a look at how we can actually pick a specific single portfolio from the efficient frontier using the concept of utility which we borrow from economics and then we're going to show how we can express this visually using what we call indifference curves. So the idea of utility is fairly straightforward. Basically the idea is that investments give us what we call utility and utility is effectively a measurement of happiness. So it's trying to put a number to how happy you are with an investment. And it might be a little bizarre at first perhaps, but that's how it works. If you try to think, well, okay, you're putting a number to happiness, what is the unit of measurement? How exactly can you objectively measure happiness and put a number to it? The answer is, well, you really can't. But the idea is to not actually try and take any kind of real world translation of the number you get. When you calculate the utility that an investment gives, the number by itself means literally nothing. It has no kind of interpretation that you can carry through into the real world. The point behind it is that you take the utility of two different investments and if one has a greater utility then that means that you prefer that investment. It doesn't really matter by how much they differ, it doesn't matter about the levels they're at, the only thing that matters is being able to look at different investments and say this one has a greater utility than this one, therefore I like it more. The numbers themselves are effectively meaningless outside of these relationships. So we have this equation here for calculating the utility that is provided by a portfolio. We say that it's equal to the expected return of the portfolio minus a half times A times the variance of the portfolio. And straight away this should make fairly good logical sense. We know that if we've got a high expected return this makes our utility higher, makes us happier, that makes sense. And at the same time since we're subtracting here if you've got a high variance then you've got a lower utility and you're less happy, which makes sense because if you've got more risk you're less happy with the investment. So what is this A term? This A is what we call the degree of risk aversion. And it's pretty simple, it basically just tells you how much you hate risk. The idea is that everybody hates risk, or maybe some people don't. If they don't, they would actually have a negative A, but that would be rather bizarre. And so we assume that everyone pretty much hates risk, but in different amounts. The idea with this utility theory here is that when we talk about an optimal risky portfolio there isn't one that is suitable for everyone. There isn't a one size fits all. Every investor is assumed to be different and every investor has their own optimal risky portfolio based on their own degree of risk aversion. So if you really 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 hate risk then the variance of the portfolio is going to have a much larger effect on the utility. Now the other question you might ask is why do we multiply that by a half? And in all honesty I'm not 100% sure why this is. But it's really not of any kind of major significance because I mean truth be told the A in itself also doesn't have any kind of real world interpretation. If you say I have a degree of risk aversion of 4, the 4 doesn't really mean anything outside of well I want to put 4 into this equation. And in saying that we could have wrote the equation without the half and instead made the A2. So it's really actually kind of pointless but for some reason somebody decided that that should be in there as a matter of scale. Not entirely sure why but it's really not a big deal either. It, it kind of doesn't matter. 
Um, one last thing to note here is that this is assuming we express the expected return and the variance in decimal terms. So if it's 2%, it's 0 0.02, so on and so forth. However, some people actually prefer to put in the percentage values. So if it was 2%, they'd put in 2. And if you do do it that way, then this 0 0.5 actually has to become a 0 0.005. But again, it really shouldn't matter. So, um, oh, before I move on, actually, yeah. So we know that we get utility from the portfolio, and obviously, what we're trying to do in finding the optimal risky portfolio is we're trying to find the one that gives us the most utility. So it's a simple matter of find the weights that give you the portfolio that maximize your utility U. And now we're going to have a look at how we can actually sort of express this. So this is our, we've got our return and our risk, and this is our minimum variance frontier. And around this point here, We've got the top here is the efficient frontier that we're going to choose from. So where is the point that gives us our maximum utility? Well, if we look back at the equation again, take note that if you were to just put in a number, just arbitrarily choose a random number and fill it in here, then you've got this function that basically just gives the relationship of the mean and the variance. And so this can actually be expressed on this graph as a curve that would look something like the following. So if you plotted this where for the utility you put in some number, you would get something looking like this. Then if you were to put in a smaller number, you would get a new curve like that and you could put in a smaller number yet and get a new curve. And the idea is you can continue doing this and eventually you would find one that just touches this. And these curves are what we call indifference curves because any combination of risk and return that falls on this curve gives you the exact same level of utility. So you they give you the exact same level of happiness. You are literally indifferent between them. If somebody cho told you to choose between two portfolios that gave these levels of risk and return, you would flip a coin on it. And when you finally get the indifference curve that only just touches this at one point, this is where you've actually finally found a real portfolio that provides this level of utility. So when we're looking for the optimal risky portfolio, the one that gives us the highest utility, we're looking for the portfolio um, which is at this point where the highest indifference curve just touches the efficient frontier. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.